Okay, so I'm going to continue with the 3D ray trace text tutorial. What we've done now is to create our 3D text, added a light. I want to now work with some of the material options. The most important options are probably the reflection options. So what we'll do is to go down to reflection intensity and increase that to 100%. And what I want to do is to demonstrate what happens when you work with the specular intensity. This starts off at 50%. If we increase it, we get, we get much brighter highlights. And there is a chance here of getting blown highlights. So you need to be careful with that. We can take this down. And if we take it all the way down, we get no highlights at all. So we're going to take this up maybe to around 60 70%. The other option is the specular shininess, which kind of like becomes more muted the higher it goes. And if you take it all the way down to zero, you get intense shininess. We're going to stick with zero for the time being because that will allow us to work uh, with ver these very low light levels and to see exactly what we're doing. I, I can, I'm going to add a few more lights later on. But for the time being, notice how the text is beginning to show some reflections along the extrusion. I'm going to select the text and I'm going to choose this this option here to change the tracking between the letters and sometimes you need to do this kind of thing in order to really see what's happening in those extruded areas there. So what you can see now is some really nice reflections happening in those extruded areas and that's basically the text reflecting itself. The other thing we can do in terms of getting interesting reflections going on is to introduce an outside texture and what that texture will do is that it will provide an environment that the text is going to reflect. So I'm going to go to project and what I've got here is this image here. This image comes from a website and I'll have a link to this website so you can download this and it's a HDR image that's a high dynamic range that allows you to get pretty intense reflections. Again you can get blown highlights when you're using HDR images and we'll tackle any problems as we come across them. So I'm going to drag this in to the project and we'll go back to the composition window and uh, this is the composition window. We've got this a uh, huge, huge HDR image inserted inside of our workspace. We can't see anything, so let's right click that layer and choose environment layer. Now what you should be able to see is that we're getting these reflections that weren't there before. If I turn off the environment layer, you can see that the entire thing has, has been lit up and we're getting reflections of that environment inside of the text. If I open this guy up, you'll see that there are options inside of the environment layer. In order to see completely what's going on, we need to switch off the other layer that we created, which was the black solid. So I'm gonna switch off that black solid. And what you should be able to see is that the environment layer has kind of wrapped itself around this entire project. If we go to the environment layer, you'll see that we can change the orientation, for instance, and get a slightly different set of reflections happening there. Or we can go to the Y rotation and just rotate that image round 360 degrees so that we're seeing different aspects of that environment layer. As you can see, the reflections inside of the text change as the environment layer changes. Now, you probably <laughs> don't want to see this layer behind your text. So what you can do is to go to the Appears in Reflections, click on that, and if you choose Only, then the environment layer will appear only as a reflection. If you click once again, it's turned off completely. And if you click again, then we see it as the backdrop and also as the reflection. So normally you probably want it on only, but for the time being, what I'm going to do is to put it on on so that it's appearing in the background and also as a reflection. And what you can do is that you can work with the layer, just maybe apply a blur to it just add a bit of blurriness there and what you'll notice is that the background becomes blurred and also the reflection becomes a little bit blurred as well. So if you've got exactly the right background you can actually animate your background and your reflections will also animate at the same time. That is if you've got exactly the right background. The problem is of course sometimes when you blur options create a very sharp gradients you can get some banding and that 
can look pretty awful. So sometimes, so most of the time, you probably want to switch this to only and just maybe even then you can animate it and you can get some pretty interesting reflections taking place inside of the text. But again, particularly with HDR images, be careful of uh, the blown highlights. Uh, those can and do occur quite easily with uh, HDR images. You can go down here and of course reduce the reflection intensity and also for this particular project I can go up to the light and reduce the light intensity. So you can see we still get pretty nice reflections without getting too much in the way of blown highlights and I'm going to demonstrate another feature of After Effects. We can go to the camera options and we can switch on depth of field. It's already been switched on for this particular project. Um, we can increase the blur level perhaps and you can see that we are getting some focus blur taking place inside of this image. I'm going to change the aperture. What you'll notice is that if you go down to draft, we've still got some of the reflections but we've lost the focus blur. We go back to final quality, we've got that camera blur there. The other thing that we can do at any time is to go to the ray tracer and we can choose if we want to uh, a higher ray tracing quality. If we go up to 11, hit OK, you should see a significant improvement in the quality of the render. So that's the render at 11, significantly improved, and we can improve it even more if we want to. But that's going to be it for this particular video. In the next video, I'm going to be looking at some of the other options that we've got when working with 3D ray traced objects inside After Effects.